Hello everybody, this is Martin John, and I am here to talk about the Dao De Ching. Uh, this is Dao of the Day. Dao of the Day is a show that I do regularly because uh, I have been forever changed by the text within the Dao. Uh, the Dao De Ching uh, helped me. I have uh, 23 and a half now, thereabouts, uh, years clean and sober. And it really helped me get a grip on where I was living under the influence, where I was under the influence of outside entities that had motives of their own. And, and it helped me not be a fool, not be a fool to marketing, not be a fool to other people, not be a fool, not just go randomly off in the world because I get excited about something. It helped me sort of center and be present with who I am and understand that um, I am um, awesome and great in every sense, just like you, right? I remember there was a time when I was younger and I used to say, you know, like, I, I wasn't special or anything like that, right? My, my sister was the special one and all these other people were special and I wasn't special. And then there was a moment in talking about different like personality things and stuff. Um, and there's a moment in my life. It was, I was, it was sober for quite some time already. Um, and I was having a conversation with someone and they said, Oh, you revert to this thing that you're special when you're in a good state. And I was like, Oh, you know, what I say now is like, I'm special just like everyone else. You know, it, it was this idea that I am just like everybody else and I'm special. And, and, and there's something interesting about that. And that was in this state of moving forward with uh, my relationship with the Tao Te Ching. Uh, once again, the Tao Te Ching is an ancient text written about 600 BCE, and it helps us live a more reasonable life. We live a life in which we don't ask other things to change for us. We kind of take things as they are, and we get to embrace who we are, because we are Tao as well, right? Like we are made of you know, stardust or whatever you want to say, you know, we're made, we, we, you know, like every religion talks like God is within you. Um, you know, this is, you are part of Tao. Tao is within everything. And, and, uh, even though we're having these subjective experiences out in the world, if we think of ourselves as separate and there's all of this separateness, the quieter we can become and the more uh, focused on the subtlety of what's going on in life, the more we really sort of start to re get realized that there is a um, there is something that connects us all. You know, I remember when I was younger, people would tell me, oh, you know, it was so strange that you called me because I was just thinking about you. And that happened to such a degree that I started pushing back on that idea that it was strange. I said, no, that that's the way it works. Even though I had no proof that that's the way it works other than you know, the, the, the fact that it happened, well, maybe it just happened to happen, but it happened to happen so often that I couldn't believe that it just was happening to happen, like happened to happen. Like I'm using happen in two different ways, I think. Um, but that's the thing. We are all connected. And if you were to think about somebody, and, and focus on them, they would know. And this is why when I talk to people about like relationships and things like that, it's like, look, you can love somebody without ever having seen them. You can, you could hold them in your heart and you can love them. So if, if a relationship with them is something that is, uh, bad for you, you don't have to stop loving them. And you don't have to engage them. It's okay. You can love them. They might not like it, but that's okay too. They're having a subjective experience out here in the world. You're having a subjective experience out here in the world. They're two different things. They are upset you're doing things to help yourself, you know, to keep you safe. And you love them anyway. They can be upset. That's their right. They have a right to be upset. They have a right to be angry. You don't have to 
you don't you don't have to um, oblige that. You don't have to align yourself and say, hey, well, I got to make it better. It's okay that they're mad at you. It's okay that they don't like you. You can still love them. And at the core of what, what so many things that Tao says, it's like, don't go flitting about just because somebody says something. Don't allow your emotions, don't allow your mind to take you out of who you are and to treat yourself with disrespect by, by being in danger because, you know, somebody, you know, somebody is, you know, like when I was younger, you know, like I was around a lot of addicts, obviously. No, oh, I was an addict. So. And then when I was getting clean and sober, people that were addicts were in my life. I remember one time I had a gambling addict staying with me. Um, and it was a friend of mine. He just happened to be addicted to gambling. Um, and he was, he was cool. Like everything was good until he wanted to gamble. And then I was like, look, I can't. I can't do that work for you. Like either you want to not gamble tonight or you do. And he was like, look, I just, I, I know that this can work out for me. Blah, blah, blah. And, and I said, look, I'd be happy to give you a hundred dollars, but if I, if you take it, you don't, you aren't welcome back here. And he said, okay. And I was like, you are going to trade our friendship for a hundred dollars. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And I let him go. And he took the hundred dollars and he left. And, and had we seen each other? Yes. Out and about, but we, we never made plans to hang out together again. Um, and you know, I know what it's like to try and manipulate people when you are under the influence. You know, yesterday I was talking about sugar and, and how sugar you know, when you're under the influence of sugar, when you're under the influence of caffeine, when you're under the influence of all these things, there is manipulating going on. It's going on within you, for you, right? Like it's that it's that part of you that is the body versus that higher mind and it coax you into being a certain way. It's tough out there because so many things are being marketed to us all the time. And that's what, you know, the Tao really kind of helped me see through a lot of that. And so I like the Tao. You might not like the Tao. I don't know what you guys have, uh, what you guys feel about the Tao. You might not even know what the Tao is. This might be your first time at the show. So what I do here on Tao of Day, uh, finally, if you guys have been waiting, thinking, what the hell is this guy talking about? <laughs> is I present the Tao Te Ching. Once again, the Tao Te Ching is an ancient text. And um, it consists of 81 short chapters. And each chapter uh, kind of highlights a different way or from a different perspective how we can align with Tao. Tao is the nature of the universe. Tao is, if we were to read Tao, if we were to read the Tao Te Ching, and we were to like look at any animal or tree or plant or whatever, we would see that Tao is being followed by all of those things. Now, if we look at people, we, Im we immediately see a gap. Right? <laughs> we immediately see, oh, wait, people do things for their own benefit. Um, and people try to control the universe and control nature to make it easy for them. And people are sad and they, they, they have expectations. And it's like, oh, all of a sudden we start to, realize that human beings have separated themselves from nature to such a degree that we um, were burdened by life, where life is such a gift. No matter what state you're in, you are receiving a gift. And that's how Tao sees it. And the Tao Te Ching, once again, with its 81 chapters, really talks in, in I, I mean, I would say it talks in great detail about how to live a reasonable life and how to get the most out of this gift of your life. And when, what I do here is I ask you to pick a number. So I want to talk to you. I want to connect with you. And by connecting with you, we get a baseline of what 
it is. So it's kind of like picking an Oracle card. If you go in to pick an Oracle, like you can just pick a card and we can talk about it. But if you give me a little information, I can help steer the number that you chose or that you will choose to kind of relate to what it is you're, you're going through right now. So if it's a birthday and you have, you're angry or whatever, or someone did something or you're triggered or whatever, all of these things can align with a different perspective. And when you have a different perspective and you recognize that your place in the world, right? Like you're not the only one out here and yet you're the only one having your experience, right? When we can recognize those things, we have the ability to, um, to understand and to be present. So uh, if anybody wants to step up and pick a number between one and 81, I would love to have you uh, and we can, we can talk. Um, I will pick a number. Uh, I'm going to pick number. Oh, we got Johnny's going to, Oh God, it's been so long since we've picked. I'm so glad Johnny's going to come join me. Hey, Martin John. Hey, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Um, a belated happy birthday. <laughs> I oh, know, thank I, you. I know um, i um been meaning to pop up and say hello, and I know it was just over a week ago, I believe, and um, you were what you popped out and you watched some football and things like that. So hopefully you'll be looking forward to some more football this weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, <laughs> I, 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 it's, it's England and Spain. So we it is. are, yeah, we are, we are, we are. We are forever tied. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking like you guys can't. You have no. You have no way through. Sorry, like there's no. There's like watching you guys and watching Spain. There is no. There. You have no path to win. No, 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 no. <laughs> Spain have been um, head and shoulders above every and um, everybody else in the tournament, and they deserve to win. Whether yeah. they will or not, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to so, wait and see. But if Spain yeah. can't pull this off, I would, I will, I, I will eat my hat, as they say. But, but, but I don't know. It's yeah. It's it's all. Yeah, it's we'll we'll see what happens. But <laughs> yeah, um, head and shoulders. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I would like to um pick. Actually, I was going to pick number 37 last week. I was just about to come up and pick number 37. And um, good old um, Dr. Roberts beat me to it. And he picked 37 as well. So oh, it, was wow. very, it was very fortuitous. Yeah. But it seems to be circling back this week. So I'd like to have, have um, another go and go for number 37, please. Yeah. I, I, I sometimes keep things short but i don't not with everybody um so let's let's go ahead and look at inspired action together Thank so you. uh that's 37 inspired action so inspired action with all the things that you like this is something that constantly comes up with you not necessarily this verse but your actions you know because so much of your actions are we hold on to them you know and so let's let's look at what this says and see yeah. what is going I, on with you these days like how is your how is how is everything with you over the last couple of weeks thank you very much for asking that um i so i've been listening to you reg regularly i'm, I'm one of your reg your your, your, reg your oh, regular listeners thank you long time yeah. listener first time caller <laughs> <laughs> and um you been uh, I know you've made references to your morning routine and that is something I have a morning routine but unlike you and some of your other good callers I tend to be a late starter and it's something I am working on um, because I find that once I do my journaling practice in the morning I do my meditation I'm actually currently doing a gratitude practice nice. and I find that once I do all of those things, it just, for want of a better word, it just clears all of the garbage yeah. out of my mind and it just sets me up for the day. That's so good. And um, 
I want to I want to just ask when do you do your gratitude? So that so that's actually a very new thing. So that's um, I'm currently doing a 28 day gratitude challenge. Okay. Um, it's something that I I know somebody's running a WhatsApp group, okay. and I, I I meditate first, then I journal, then I do my gratitude practice, and that's my order at the moment. So wonderful. Um, and very, get, get into the habit of doing all of those things. Of course, um, gratitude things I've found are great at night before bed, because when you go to bed, your mind is open. Yeah. So if you can, if you can find, I mean, I don't know how long you spend, 10 minutes or whatever it is, to just write a couple gratitude things and end your day there. You will go to sleep with those gratitudes rolling around in your mind. And you will get more out of it than doing gratitude journals and then going out into your day. Yeah. So th thank you for that. I am um, and I know you're doing a challenge so I'm just I'm just putting that out there as a... Ab absolutely no no that's wonderful thank you and part of this challenge luckily it's inspired by the secret which is not something I'm a huge fan of <laughs> but um, here, but but it it whatever yeah it's yeah it's, it's out there and it's 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 nice whatever it's but. nice exactly I think there's elements of it that um I I resonate with and other elements I don't right and um as part of this, the structure of this, you write 10 things in the morning that you're grateful for. And you say the things you're grateful for. And, and, and importantly, you write why you're grateful for them. And I okay. hadn't appreciated how important that was. Yeah. But writing the why for, for what you're grateful for has really gives it so much more depth and gives it so much more clarity. And then, and then you go through a particular gratitude practice for that day. And then at the end of the evening, you take what they call your, your magic rock or your gratitude rock just before you go to sleep. And you say what you, one thing or, you know, a few things before that you're grateful for before you, before, before you go to sleep. So it's very much aligned with what you've just suggested. And I, I, I like that as well because it puts you in a good place where the, when when actually you're going to sleep and it makes you appreciate what it helps you reflect on the day and what and what, and what actually you can be grateful for and really sets you up for sleep you know yes. for for productive sleep right like for a sleep that you can have and not everything has to be productive however um it's so often we can go to sleep after watching like a cop show or, you know, like something on the TV, you know, like, and we could, we could be under the influence of something. And then, oh, we had dreams about the show or we had dreams that, you know, were aligned with that. And it's like, wouldn't it be nice to have dreams about the things we're grateful for? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, I think I might have mentioned this before and what I do try and do is bookend my days. So I have a morning routine and I have a, a bedtime routine. My bedtime routine involves um, um, a little bit of meditation, reading something of a that's, you know, that's helpful. And um, I, I go for, I also have my evening walk. So I, I Beautiful. think, I think I, I, I make an effort. Now, I think the only the, the only thing is I have these lovely routines. I'm not always brilliant at, at sort of adhering to them. And I'll be honest. This is, this is, <laughs> this is we've talked, if you've been listening, you know, we talk about the idea of rigidity and softness, yes. right? If you're, if, and, and judgment, right? So you can be soft in your routine. So you don't have to do it every day. Um, but if you judge yourself on it, then you start stagnating that energy and it stays as a judgment. It doesn't, it doesn't actually um, benefit. Right. And then it's like, Oh, I did this thing and I feel good that I did something right now. You are patting yourself on the back for your productivity once again. And that's not 
healthy either. No. You know, you want to be in a space of like, oh, I, I'm going, you know, like I'm not doing it today and that's okay. Or, oh, look, I did it for 10 days in a row. That's nice. And I want to keep it going. But the moment it becomes this rigid thing, it's like, okay, well, let's, let's add some softness one day. And you don't have to plan to not do it. But if it doesn't happen, you don't even have to judge yourself for it. It's just like, oh, it didn't happen yesterday. But I, I, you know what? I'm also recognizing that the next day I was a little more lethargic. So I see the benefit of it and I'm aware. And it's like, oh, you know what? I want to do this. And if I don't get to do it, that's okay. It's not something I have to do, but it is something that benefits me in, in ways that aren't directly connected to writing this out. Yeah. And, and the key word there for me, that, and it's a word that's come up in the last few days, is judgment. Mm-hmm. And um, I try not to go off on too much of a tangent, but um, I bumped into somebody a couple of days ago who'd had a, um, who, 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 who's, who's um, within my neighborhood and I know them. And they had a very serious accident some time ago. And it incurred um, some some very serious brain damage, and their life changed pretty yeah. much over, sort of um, over, um, overnight. And we were talking about, and you know, my you know, post operate. You know, I had this idea of pre operation and post operation, and how and what and what sort of my life was like. And and he 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 was talking about this idea of resilience, and not and and i think a lot of it is um it comes into it it, i think judgment seemed to be it's not judging your well what am i trying to say here what i'm trying to say so we we were talking about the concept of sort of our our old self versus our new self and that we have to let go of our old identity to embrace our new identity mm-hmm. and we need to stop judging where we think we should be or what or, or or you know and hold on to the dreams and aspirations and identity that used to be part of us and that we wanted it to be and accept our reality and i think letting go of that judgment is particularly important for me i actually had um a little win recently where i gave up chocolate for five weeks and i was so happy and um i because i I read this uh, idea that if you give up sugar for two weeks you kind of you can break it you you break the addiction yeah now I, 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 I gave up I gave up chocolate for five weeks and I was doing great and then I went to buy a chocolate bar for my friend and she didn't want it so I ended up having it inside my house and <laughs> ended up eating chocolate again oh. so, um, if, if willpower is not strong enough yes it, exactly you talk about no executive function and yeah. Um, yeah that's one of the things I remember so I've got to stop bringing so I've, 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 I've fallen off the bandwagon temp, temp, temporarily with sort of my chocolate but um, I'm trying not to judge myself for it right and it's really about awareness and we're going to get to this number 37 in a second but I just wanted to kind of like you know kind of get a kind of point of where you're at but it is so much about that idea of awareness you are now are you aware of the difference between Johnny with five weeks of no chocolate and what happened to Johnny two days after he ate chocolate and what that, what the difference is? You that's know? some, that's something you talk about. You're, you, you've got to a point where you're very, you have such good awareness and such good sensitivity. You know, when you eat sugar, that, the effect it has on you right and 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 i i can't i want i want you to know i can't identify that it is actually the sugar but two days after i eat some crap sugar a day and a half after i eat crap sugar or you know i go through this like lethargic self-deprecating state and it's like who is that like i have not been that person for so long that 
it and and when when people ask me, oh, how are you doing? I'm just like, you know, I'm sad today, and I'm like, and I'm I'm beating myself up, and I'm like, and I don't know what that's all about. And then I think back, and I'm like, oh, I did that candy thing the other day. And I'm like, okay, that's the only thing that really changed, you know, and I don't have energy and I'm, I'm afraid I'm never going to have energy again. Right. Like (laughs) things like, it's like, that's not thinking clearly. That's not, that's not who I am usually, but usually I'm on this strict diet because of my MS. Usually I'm on, you know, all of these sorts of, um, you know, I take my tinctures and I do my things to keep myself healthy because like, you know, this is a day because I don't want to be on medication. Right. So. <clears throat> All right, so you're about to drop off, but I'm going to go ahead and read this, and then uh, you come back up if you have the, the time. Otherwise, absolutely, yeah, I, love yeah, to. Yeah, wonderful, All right. wonderful. Thanks, Majum. Yep. Okay, so Dow never does anything, yet inspires everything to do. When beings maintain the action of Dow, they spontaneously transform from within. When that transformation acquires a name. And in parentheticals, I have an identity. External forces inspire actions from desire. Actions without identity are free from external goals. Without desire, honoring stillness, all things are at peace. So what stood out to you? So, so I have your little book in front of me. So yeah, I, I figured I, that's why I was like, giving, I was like, I'm going to give you a moment. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just having. Um, I think I've. I I think the two two lines that really, I'm trying to move away from is well, the line I'm trying to move away from is external forces inspire actions from desire. And I want to move to the point of actions without identity. <clears throat> right. So, so that's only half of the line, right? Like, so the, the, only half of the sentence. The sentence is, when transformation acquires an identity. Yeah. External forces inspire actions from desire. So when any transformation acquires an identity. Now, you will transform naturally you will you will be inspired to do things like you were inspired to choose the doctor that you chose in one way or another you inspired to do it by doubt yes Yes. it had all of these external things and you could go ahead and say i'm a victim of other people yes but you still did this thing right yes you ended up doing this thing that transformation when it was complete, when that action that was inspired was complete, it acquired a name. And the name that it acquired was, this is wrong. This is mm. not right. This is not the way it's supposed to be. It acquired <laughs> yeah. that name. Yeah. Now, because that action acquired this name of wrong, external forces inspired actions within your life from a desire to correct it from a desire to get it right from a desire to oppose this wrong now if it if it if that transformation acquired a name which was profit Let's say, let's say you were making money off of this inspired action and then you became an influencer. Yesterday, Julie and I were talking about influencer. If you had become an influencer because of what spontaneously transformed within you and then you said, I'm an influencer, this is what, and then you started external forces, like right, that money, that pay would inspire further action within you from a desire to get more. That's what this line really is saying. So it's like, like once you have, once you've identified with something and you have this name associated, once you, once you put something into um, a, a, a framework, external forces, these desires 
that you want. Like those desires trying to get something from the external world. That's what's inspiring you. Tao is no longer inspiring you because you have an identity. Once you have an identity, just like you and your friend were talking about, these, this is the identity I used to have. Now on the yeah. other side of this, I'm still trying to get that. But that's yeah. all external. That's not being present with who you are. Yeah. And, and it reminds me of something a teacher once used to tell me. And they used to say, our greatest de desire is to prove ourselves right. And if we have an identity, we want to act in a court. We want to act in alignment with that identity. We want to. We want to be seen. Yes. You know, we because because it's so hard for like you can't be seen completely, but your identity can be manufactured and put out in the world. Yeah. Because you are so much more than your identity. But if we don't value all of those little intricate things and we only value a specific identity, right? We only value your, you know, sexy body or we only value your, you know, like um, audience or we only value your um, intelligence or we only value your money. Well, then you probably are running around in the world with a lot of self-doubt and trying to hedge all your bets on those specific things that can be seen from externals. Yes. You're looking for external validation. Right. You're, yeah. So I, I want to just go back to the beginning of this. Tao never does anything yet inspires everything to do. So this entire universe is inspired through Tao. And this is just, as this one starts, and th many of these start this way, this is just a fact. This isn't trying to raise any questions. It's just saying it inspires everything to do. So even your addictions, even your grasping, even your judgments, those are inspired by Tao. They're inspired by Tao to a, a certain end. Like we're going to, we are going to grow from this. You're going to, you're, this is your, your, this is your gift of life. And the, these are the circumstances under which your gift is, you know, like you've gotten gifts before and sometimes those gifts break. It's like, is that the fault of the person who gave it to you? No, no. This and is yours to deal with. Well, yes. And sometimes you don't appreciate the gift. Right, <laughs> and, right. and that's and that's I think you don't have the awareness to appreciate the gift and I think also something that you've said previously that I, I that I've, I've sat with for a while is being open to receive to be feel to be feeling worthy enough that you are you you um, you can receive you can receive and accept the gifts right now and then this is what this, this, this says next, right? So after that fact, it says, when beings maintain the action of Tao, this is like as a child, as young people, like, you know, even as an adult, like this can happen. You can maintain the action of Tao, you know, even without knowing anything about Tao. Yes. When beings maintain the action of Tao, they spontaneously transform from within. They become who they are. They are, they are filled with light and inspiration and they do something and it is beautiful. Yes. Now, here's the crux. When that transformation acquires an identity, you are inspired, you are doing everything and it is like, it is so beautiful and it is all aligned and it feels so good. And then you say it. <laughs> this is this is my purpose yeah you put a label on it yeah. you put a label on it you say this yeah. is who i am i am an artist or i am you know i am this thing or i am and then you try to commodify it yeah right this is external forces the need to 
make money at everything that we do, the need to be praised for everything that we do, the need to, you know, be a victim of everything that we, right? Whatever that is, right? Like, first off, it's like this beautiful, open heart, light thing. And then we go ahead and we catch it and we grasp at it and we trans, and that transformation acquires a name. I'm going to teach young people all about like, I'm going to, I'm going to teach young people. I'm going to help people. I'm going to do these things. This is my purpose. All of a <laughs> yes. sudden. And then just like with you, it's like you had a purpose and then you had a, a, a surgery and that purpose or that being or that identity is no longer going to be feasible. Yeah. In the way that you imagined it. Let's yeah. also put it that way. Yes. So external forces inspire actions from desire, your desire to grasp at that identity, your desire to all of these external forces are, are, are at play. And then we go on to the last section. Actions without identity are free from external goals. That goes back to when we maintain the action of Tao, we spontaneously, and imagine if we can just continuously spontaneously transform from from within constantly transforming this is why the Tao talks about death so much because you're going to die all the time in your life because those identities are just going to die off die off and you will you will raise a new you will transform again and eventually you'll stop identifying with those transformations eventually you're going to be like oh no this is just who i am and this is just a journey i'm not trying to get anywhere and so you're free from external goals. There's no external goal. You don't, you don't have a want. You're just here doing this, whatever it happens to be. Yeah. And then, you know, we haven't talked about, and, and then we have this, this, these two words, honoring stillness. So without desire, honoring stillness. It's interesting that we bring up stillness all of a sudden at the end of this. Like everything else was inspired action, spontaneous transformation, like acquiring a name, desire, do, 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 acquire, grasp, all of this stuff. And all of a sudden we have this without desire, honoring stillness. All things are at peace. Like this one is entire, entitled inspired action. Where the hell does stillness come into play? <laughs> it's, it's kind of, it, it's slightly, yeah, because... Towards uh, it finishes with without desire, honoring stillness, all things are at peace, which and I understand that's kind of a paradox. Right. Or with sort of inspired action. It's like stillness is the only way that we can become inspired. Yes. And through that stillness, we take action and then transform. But as soon as that transformation acquires a name, we are constantly active and we're no longer inspired. Yeah. We're being inspired from an external, right? We're like, we're like, just like I said, external forces inspire actions from desire. That's not inspired. It's just like, we're doing it. Like that's not, it inspires action, but it's not inspired action. Yes. And I was thinking, Often when I'm in nature, I put myself in nature because I have this concept that when I'm in nature, I don't distract. But in the process of not distracting, I, I actually attract. Right. That's where the inspired, that's where you talk about yielding to stillness. Right. That's where the, and when you're at peace, that is where inspired action is birthed from or is or can be birthed from right yeah and you can't, in, I, now sorry. you can I, because again all thing Tao never does anything yet inspires everything to do so even the addictions that we we we, we fall victim to even the abuse that we give others these are all inspired by Tao. And the thing is, is that it's, that's okay. They're not wrong. The thing is, is you want a life 
of peace. Yeah. It's not saying that anything is right or wrong. It's saying without desire, honor, honoring stillness, all things are at peace. That's what it's saying. It's not saying all things are what you want. <laughs> all things are, it's not saying all things are exactly as they're supposed to be in your mind and the minds of others. All things it's are just, without judgment. Right. It's yeah. just at peace. Yeah. And you can achieve that through stillness when you're free from external goals. Because yeah. That stillness is going to inspire your action and you will continuously transform and your heart is going to be open to these things and you're going to experience, oh my God, my life is so full. The moment you try and grasp at that and have an identity, that's when it starts to slip through your fingers. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. I do have one comment, if you don't mind. I know no, my time just, just, mm. just about to run out. Um, I... The, we talk about this sort of journey of um, it feels like it's going from childlike to adult back to childlike, if that makes sense. Um, come back up if you can, um, if you have the moment to do that. I just want to, I want to hear a little bit more about your comment. Um, Because I think it's going to go back to adult, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but, no. but, 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 but the adult is going to, once again, like, first off, let's start with the fact that like a child and an adult, and I've talked about this in, in a past episode, uh, not recently though, a long time ago, I talk about like a child is just a label you put on somebody. Yeah. They're humans. An adult is a label you put on somebody. If we stop separating the two right and we 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 look at children as adults who just don't know yet you know um adults who just have less experience yes and i think i think what i think i was I, so it it feels like um when beings maintain the action of dao they trans they spontaneously transform with from within and that 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 kind of resonates with like the childlike wonder right. that we all have as as kids and then as we grow into adults you know, um external influences sort of create these identities that we want to uphold and then at some point hopefully we realize we want to return to that childlike wonder and embrace. And so it's kind of going from simple to complex back to simple and back to simple so that we can in some way be complex. Yes. So we have to go through the complex to become simple again, if that right. makes sense. Yeah. And then, and then we become, and you know, as, as it being non-dual, we become neither. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. We, we, so, so then we can be still without judgment and we can be still. And then that stillness can inspire actions that we can take because we're adults. Yes. And, and I think it's, it's, we'll, yeah, I, I'm explaining this badly, but it, 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 it's as if um, the innocence that we had as a child is now something we can embrace as an adult, right? not have any sort of shame or guilt about it and, 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 and understand it's, it's actually our birthright. Yeah. So... And I think that that's, you know, it's a shame that we ask children, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. Because what you're doing is, and when I used to do workshops regularly, <clears throat> pardon me, um, I used to ask people, I used to have people write down what they're good at and a list of things that they're bad at. And then we would talk about the idea of like, well, how do you know you're good at this? How do you know you're bad at this? And it's always because 
they either did or didn't receive praise. Yeah, I was just judgment. about to say, somebody told them. Yeah, absolutely. Right, yeah. somebody else told them they were good at it or they were yeah. bad at it. And it had nothing to do, you know, like, I mean, I've talked to you about writing my journal with my left hand. Guess what? I was bad at it for a long time, but there yeah. was no measuring stick. So it didn't matter that it was hard and it didn't matter that it couldn't be read. It just was just as it was. And the fact that every child is going to go through that difficult stage of trying to write for the first time and draw and like hold a pencil and like they're, but it's play for them. Yes. For exactly. us, it's work. We got to learn. We got to do, but that's the thing. If we can just turn it into play, stop judging and then just do the things we can, you know, like we, why is it hard to write with our feet? Like that shouldn't be something like it could just be fun. To yeah. Try. And- I think that's where I'm trying to get back to. I want life to be play again. Yeah. I, 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 and, and, and life can be play. And yeah. I don't want to use the word should. <laughs> I don't know why it shouldn't be. Like, exactly, yeah. It? It, 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 life, you know, like, again, life is this gift that we have. How are we engaging in that gift? How are we having, um, what, what is our relationship to that gift? You know, that's the question that we ask. And, and here it's talking about like, when beings maintain the, and, and like for me, when I talk about like that transformation, when beings maintain the action of Tao, they spontaneously transform within that spontaneous transformation. We've all experienced that at some point that like warm glow of like, this is who I am, but yes, this is only who you are at this moment. And you're going to transform again and again and again in your life. Grasping at this is only maybe because you got praised for it. Yes. And that glow of being loved and seeing how much love can flow through you and that glow of everybody like looking at you like you're special or whatever, whatever made that transformation happen. Whatever spontaneous action made that transformation happen, you now identify with. Now you want to get it again. This is where desire starts to take us off course. And then eventually that which gave us so much joy becomes work. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Martin John. I appreciate it. I've, I've taken up a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of your time this morning. Oh, so, I, I'm, um, I'm happy. I'm happy that you did. I hope everybody is, is enjoying it. I love yeah. these because like, it's just you and I here talking. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's great. I really appreciate talking to you and um, I appreciate you turning up each morning and um, I enjoy listening to you. So thank you very much and um, good luck on Sunday. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, you as well. You yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We'll see what happens. Um, you guys have, uh, you guys are doing, you know, you're here. So yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good match. I'm looking it's forward gonna to it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be yeah, played. It's yeah. going to be good. Cool. All right. All right. Thanks we'll very much. Man. Judge. We'll be. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. A beautiful conversation. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed that. Um, I am going to be signing off. It is Thursday. I have a, I have a phone call uh, shortly. Um, I do appreciate doing these, uh, these Tao of the Days. And um, I love that you guys show up and you listen. And uh, I hope they are helpful for you. And for those of you who have uh, written me little messages in the background, um, I, I always try and get, you know, get back to you. Um, if I don't, I know sometimes my messages just aren't going through. I don't know what that's about. So if I don't write, it's not because I'm not trying. I see them and I want to reach out and say hello. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys um, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow morning, same time. And until next time, keep recovering yourself.